magnify your name we magnify your name we magnify your name thank you lord god we bless you we worship you in jesus name thank you for who you are we honor you our god we glorify you oh there's nothing better than you there's nothing Better than you, Lord, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. Father, we taste of the goodness of God. We taste of your power and your might. We taste of the awesomeness that you are. Keep our eyes on you. Keep our eyes on who you are. Raise our imagination of who you are so that you're bigger than everything. You're much higher than anything. We bless you, O oh Lord our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning we're sharing on Redeemed. Redeemed. I think that's the name of the most popular church in Nigeria. Redeemed. Yeah. That's not... It's not the name of the church. We're not here to talk about the church. We're here to talk about us at the redeemed of God. And that's where I believe they took their name from. That we are redeemed. Say, I am redeemed. Say that again. I am redeemed. So I'll, I'll start from a scripture. A scripture has been burning in my heart for a whole month. I haven't been able to get away from this scripture. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 and 2. If you've been around me, I must have shared that scripture with you. Have I shared it with you? Shared it with you? Yeah. But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name you are mine fear not for i have redeemed you i have called you by your name you are mine let's repeat that fear not for i have redeemed you i can hear you guys fear not for i have redeemed you I have called you by your name. You are mine. One more time. This is scripture that is good for, to remember, to memorize. One more time. Let's do it together. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. What's your name? What's your name? Yeah, yeah that God says specifically, I have called you by your name. You are mine. Verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Nor shall the flames scorch you. It's a beautiful scripture. That means that you're going to go through water. That means you're going to go through fire. But don't be afraid because what water does to people, water will not do to you. What fire does to people, fire will not do to you. Why? The answer is in verse 1. For I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. The entire world lives in fear. Everything in the world operates by fear. What drives the world? I can tell you that the number one thing that drives the world is what? Fear. 
fear of the unknown, fear of trouble. So every day, the devil scares us. The Bible says the devil himself goes around like a roaring lion, like a, that means he is not. He is just like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. How does the devil devour? By putting fear into your heart. And once that fear comes, everything you do from that point becomes what? Irrational. You don't act normally. And let's, let's, let's look into these things. What are the things that we are afraid of? Number one thing, when I speak to many people that they are afraid of, you won't believe, it's actually loneliness. That they're going to get old and nobody will like them and they will not fulfill their dreams and they'll be all by themselves. So many people fear that. Some young women I speak to speak like, maybe nobody will like me. So that fear of loneliness, there's the fear of unworthiness. Am I good enough? We also know our secret sins. We know the places where we fail God. We know that habit that holds us down. We know it. So we have this fear of unworthiness. Am I worthy to come before God? Of course, sin is a minus. Let's not even play with it. Sin is a minus. And anyone who is chained to sin, anyone who is Anyone who is chained to sin, the power of God is not made full in them. And God is here to break the burden of sin. So we can read Romans chapter 8 verse 1 with confidence. And when it's done, we can shout out, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not out of the flesh, but out of the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. There is a law of sin and death. But for those who stand in Christ, there's no more a law that has power over you. So your feeling of unworthiness is not righteous. That feeling is not from God. That spirit tells you that you're not good enough from God. It's not from God. Because when you begin to walk in righteousness, God releases you from the burden of sin. You're no more a sinner. Some of us fear that we're not going to be successful. We fear that the way our life is going, we don't have money yet. We may not make it. Some of us fear that we're going to, we're going to, this economy that is happening is going to make us broke. Some people who are business owners may fear that the, everything that's happening, maybe in another one or two years, that's going to be the end of their business. That's going to be the end of their lives. So that fear is there. Many people fear that they're going to lose everything. Many people fear that in the comeback economy after COVID-19, that they will have nothing to come back to. Fear, the fear of it, it hasn't happened yet, but the fear of it has captured many hearts. Many of us fear job loss, especially when the organization announces that, okay, they're letting go 25% of the employees, 75%, every half the people are going to go. So fear captures your hearts. Some of us fear sickness, that we're going to be sick. You know, someone in your family may have been sick, you know, we have, you know, some, some of us are even afraid right now that we're going to catch Corona and we're going to die from catching it. Some of us fear that because someone in your family died of cancer, it means that you're going to die of cancer too. Some of us fear diabetes. You know, the fact that your dad died of diabetes doesn't mean it has to be your story. They say we have a family history of epilepsy and mental instability in our family. They fear sickness. They fear HIV AIDS. Are sickness real? Yes. Is disease real? 
Yes. But should we live in fear of them? No. But as the Bible says, by his stripes, we have been healed. Some of us fear marriage. Many single people fear to go into marriage. They are trembling, like, am I going to get it right? Or is my marriage going to be a mistake like everybody else's marriage? Some fear that they will never find someone to marry them. Do you know how the devil does this? So the young people are fearing that they will never find someone to marry them. The married people are fearing that maybe their marriage will not last. So we're, we're telling young people to hold on and think very well before going to marriage. We're telling old, we're telling married people that they should enjoy their marriage. So the people who are not married are trying to get married. All the people who are married are trying to run out from marriage. Some of us fear mental health challenges. And truly the disease today is great in the mental health arena. There's so many people whose mental, mental health is so challenged. They have all types of mental health maladies. They're unstable in their mind. There's a pressure in their world. They feel under the burden of mental challenges. My friend Oyinda and I wrote a book, wrote an e-book about a year ago, inspired by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit told us that many believers today have mental health challenges that they need to cultivate mental strength using the word of God. We all know that the devil wants to make you, if the devil can attack you physically, you attack your mind. If the devil can get, <laughs> he can get an inch in you, he will run for your mind. He will go for your mind. He will make you fear that you're not going to be stable in your mind. And for people who have suffered from depression, they feel like this depression is like a web. There's no reason for depression. Some of them are wealthy, so it's not money. Some of them are pretty, so it's not, it's not, it's not beauty. Some of them are knowledgeable, so it's not ignorance. Some of them are rich, so it's not, it's not poverty. They have everything, and sometimes they even feel guilty for having depression, even though. And we fear that we're never going to get better. <laughs> Many of us fear death. Thinking like, I'm going to die. And the devil from time to time releases the spirit of the fear of death into the church. Especially when you know someone who has passed away, an uncle, a friend dies. I remember a few friends of mine who went to pray for someone who had passed away in the morgue. And the spirit of death released himself from that mortuary into them. The fear of it. And they were paralyzed for weeks they saw bodies do you know there's a spirit of death that comes and haunts people with fear so you fear that you're going to lose your life it's fear fear so the bible says fear not guess how many times 365 times that is one fear not for every day of the year. It means that every day you wake up, there will be one fear or the other. So the Bible now made adequate provision for you to fear not. Every day you wake up, what do you tell yourself? Fear not. Why? Fear not for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When we preached last week that no other idols, people were looking at us like, which idols? Until you go to Instagram and see somebody selling special package. 
You understand? Prayer houses are everywhere. There are prayer contractors. People want to buy your prayer points and pray over you for access so they can have access to you. If boyfriend want to toast girl today and you try, 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 you see that the girl is all about God, you now get prophetic word. Sister, last night I had a dream. And I saw like devils all around you. And, and I just felt like there was a sword in my hand. I was just striking the devils, striking the devils. When I strike them, bam, 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 they just explode. And in the end, it was just me and you looking into your eyes. I just knew that the Lord wanted me to marry you. Somebody said so good. <laughs> so our revelations are born out of what we want. Every prophet speaks from the place of what he wants. Like most of the prophetic gift that God wants to express, to build the body, to raise people, people are now using this as tools for commerce. And you know, there's a hunger for the miraculous more than ever. People are looking for miracles. The other day I saw on Facebook street where a native doctor was advertising that pastors should come to him to get power to do miracles. That's the world we live in. Jesus said, a wicked and an adulterous generations are always looking for signs. God will speak his word to you in the morning. The word of God is not enough for you. You're looking for a miracle. People will travel far to go and buy holy water. People will go to somewhere to buy special comb of blessing. And if you comb your hair forward, all the blessing will come into you. If you comb your hair backward, all the curse will leave you. By running round and round, we entrapped ourselves. How many mothers have been chasing for their husband to love them, going from harbor list to harbor list? In the end, they carry their children and pour some poison to their future generation. And the children begin to struggle with demonic covenants because the mothers were running from something. The occultic is growing. Why? Because of fear. If you hear Black Lives Matter movement, it's driven by fear. If you see white privilege, it's driven by fear. If you hear feminism, it's driven by fear. If you see charities, the charities is driven by fear. Come and see poor children in Africa. Even sometimes, oh, look at the poor children at the junction. If we don't take care of these poor children, they will rise up and become armed robbers and they'll come and attack us. We're living in our fancy houses in the big. So even the whole idea of calling people to give is driven by fear. Pastors preach by fear. You go to hell. It's like the whole idea of the love of God is even that is twisted and people move their lives by fear. Prophets prophesy by fear. The World Head Health Organization leads people by fear. You guys remember when Melinda Gates said about Nigeria that dead bodies will litter the streets of Africa. You guys remember coronavirus was pushed by fear. Many countries are waking up and say that, why did we even do the lockdown? They've broken their economies. Some of the strategies that they're using to run the nation is by fear. The lockdown of the ch churches is by fear. Let's be honest. Everything is fear. And guess the biggest sellers of fear, the news. They don't talk about, don't talk about parents. Oh, look at these wonderful parents taking their children to school. Do you see that in the news? You don't see that in the news. Parents taking their children to school. Does it make it in the news? 
Does that happen every day? They don't talk about husband and wives who love each other. And I, do they, do, does it make it to the news? See fathers struggling and carrying their children and walking for their children in the park. Is it making it in the news? What makes it in the news? Violence. The woman who killed her husband. The man who beat his wife and left a mark. That news will be shared on social media a million times. Love is not talking about it, it's not talked about in the news. Except seduction. Nobody talks about real love, sacrifice. Doesn't make it to the news. So news itself drives out by fear. So the power of God is in his word. If God wants to give you power to overcome the spirit that runs the world, he puts it in his word. If God wants to enable you to have what it takes to overcome in a broken world, he puts it in his word. Say his word. Oh, the power of God sits in his word. And it is written in the book of Isaiah. A voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. And every crooked path shall be made straight. And the rough ways smooth. And all humanity will see God's salvation. This Isaiah scripture was quoted I think that's Isaiah 40. But this scripture was quoted in every one of the four Gospels. They quoted Isaiah. This particular one I read is from Luke chapter 3, verse 4 to 6. Prepare the way for the Lord. God's word is coming. Prepare the way for the Lord. If you want to deal with fear, prepare a way in your life for the Lord. If you want to overcome fear, prepare a way in your heart for the Lord. If you want to win over fear, prepare a way in your heart for the Lord. And what did he say? What are the things that you used to prepare a way for the Lord? Make straight paths for him. What does straight mean? It means make the road smooth. Yeah? How do you make roads smooth? Every valley Say after me, every valley shall be filled. What does that mean? It means that the place in which you feel inferior must come up. If you feel under, it was, that's a valley. If you feel poor, that's a valley. If you feel broken, that's a valley. If you feel incapable, that's a valley. That should be what? Filled. Say, fill up the valleys. The next way to prepare a way for the Lord is every mountain and hill shall be brought low. What is mountain? Superiority complex. What is mountain? Obstacle. What is mountain? Problem. What is mountain? That big thing in front of you. That thing must be brought low. Say every mountain must be brought low. Preach it me this afternoon. Say, every mountain must be brought low. Say it, say it, you at home. Say, every mountain must be brought low. And then he says, every crooked ways must be made smooth. What is crooked ways? I don't think we need to answer for that. Crooked ways. <laughs> Corruption. Mago, mago. Connie. <laughs> Do you understand? Like all these wuru wuru, which which one is which one which other ones do you guys remember again? Kurukere. It's a Nigerian lingua. Yeah? Every crooked part, everything that doesn't align, make it straight. And the rough ways, what's rough? That, that whole tendency to be angry, that whole tendency to be scatter, scatter, every rough ways, make it smooth. How? God's strategy for repair is his word. 
God's strategy for reform is what is his word. I can hear you this afternoon. God's strategy for repair is what is his word. And then all humanity will see God's salvation. When we're able to do this, God's salvation will be clear for all humanity. There is a provision for you. If Jesus loves you enough to die for you, then the devil can gain nothing from you. This is a simple word I brought today, and I'm just about to round it up. One word from God is enough. It's not about the hundreds of scriptures you know. One word from God activated in your heart is enough. And God begins to say, number one, fear not. What does, what does he say? Fear not for, oh, I want to hear you. Fear not for, oh, you guys are tired. Let's say it out together. Say it into your mic. Fear not for I have redeemed you. What does that mean? I paid a price for you. I ransomed you. I bought you. I have redeemed you means I paid a price for you. I bought you. You are mine. Do you know there's things that we need to pay for? Some of our sins. Some of the wrong things that we've done. Yeah? Jesus said, I've paid for you. Tell someone, he has paid for you. Uh, if you guys are watching together at home and there are two people, tell the other person, he has paid for you. 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 He's paid it. He's redeemed you. <laughs> He's redeemed you. And then number two, he says, I have called you by your name. What's your name? Shout it out one more time. Emmanuel, Neka, Vic, Vic, Victor, Emeke. What's your name? Okwe, Okwe me posi. Anie Bess. Ayomide, Olutomai. He has redeemed you. He has redeemed you. Godwin, you've been redeemed. Winnie, you have been redeemed. <laughs> I've called you by your name. You are mine. That's the last one that makes me rejoice. You are mine. Who is your owner? God is not yours. You are God's. You belong to him. Of course, he's yours. But first of all, it's not about you, him being yours. That is your strength. It's actually about you being his. He is your owner. These words should strengthen you. These words should encourage you that you are not lost in the world. That you shouldn't live by fear. That the news shouldn't drive your heart of the world. That fear of death, fear of lack of success, fear of brokenness, fear of sickness should not be in your life. Why? Because he has redeemed you. He has called you by your name. You are his. You belong to the Lord. I want to pray for someone today who is bound by fear. The spirit of fear is all over you. I want to pray for you. Father, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever, whatever time this person is watching this, I break the power of fear in their lives now in the name of Jesus. I lose the yoke of fear in their lives in the name of Jesus. They will not fear death. They will not fear disease. 
They will not fear poverty. They will not fear the loss of business. They will not fear nothing. Why? Because they are being redeemed. I bring the power of redemption upon someone bound by sin. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break the yoke of sin over your life. Sin shall not have dominion over you in the name of Jesus. Someone who feels like, oh no, I've, I've been broken, I'm bound, I'm always in sin. No, sin shall not have dominion over you. My, my goodness, it's not enough for you to come and be saying that Jesus died and, you are, and you're, not, you're still the same. Oh, I, this is my weakness. I keep rising and falling. No, sin shall not have dominion over you. You've been redeemed. You've been made whole. You've been ransomed. The price of your sin has been paid. There's no more rising and falling for you. You will walk in righteousness. You will walk in power. You will walk in authority. The yoke of sin is broken. No more falling for you. You will stand in the strength of Yahweh. Why? Because he has redeemed you. He has redeemed you. He has called you beloved. He loves you. He wants you. He wants you. He wants you. Can you imagine that God sent his son Jesus Christ to die for you? And if he can die for you, it means that you're worth it. You're valuable. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 2 that God placed the man who had formed in the garden of Eden and God breathed into his nostrils and breath the breath of life and man became a living soul if god can put his own breath in you it means that you have value you're worth it i want you to hug yourself this morning just put your two hands around yourself and rock it from side to side you're worth redemption you're worth saving you're worth bringing back you may be lost, but that's not your name. Sin is not your name. The flesh is not your name. The brokenness of this life is not your name. Your habits is not your name. Say, I am loved. I can hear you say, I am loved. I am loved by the maker of my heart. I'm loved. I'm loved by you. I'm loved by you. Yes, Lord God, you're pouring your holy water on me. You are, you are washing me. You are cleansing me. You are redeeming me. You are making me new. You are, you, you are pouring something new on me that I will not be the same again. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Redeemer. Redeem someone, oh God. Someone who will do the replay of this, oh God, redeem them. Someone sitting afar, oh God, redeem them. Show them who they are. I don't know what fear the devil has driven into your world. Maybe I didn't mention it. I don't know what the devil has used to bind you. You can't even go out. You can't even express yourself. You're actually telling everybody in your world to be more careful and more careful. <laughs> Like, people have stayed in their home and caught the virus. Release yourself. Free yourself. And if God wants you to die, why do you even want to live in this broken world? Honestly. <laughs> to live is Christ and to die is gain. Why are you so afraid? Do you know that God may even want your business to end so he can start a new kind of business through you? Do you know that God wants one job to end so he can give you another kind of job? Is it possible that the, your biggest fear is exactly where God wants to lead you through? When you go through, the Bible says it, you will go through. When you go through the waters, you will not be drowned. But you cannot stop yourself from going through the water you must go through. When you go through the fire, you shall not be burned. What does that mean? You have to go through the fire, but you will not be burned. The flames 
it shall not harm you. Hallelujah. Let's read that scripture again. Thus says the Lord. Yeah, I, I'm turning there. My pages have refused to turn. My pages have refused to turn. Say hallelujah, hallelujah. But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. One more time, let's read it together. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. One more time, one last time. Let's do it well. One, two, go. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Amen. Praise God. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. 